the Beatitudes part two. So Matthew chapter five, verses four says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. When we read it in another translation, it says, blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. So we know, of course, that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. It says it in the word, but this scripture, it promises us way more than that. It goes so much deeper. And that is why it's so important to meditate on the word, to unpack it, to study it, because you find all these mysteries that you never would have known before. So let's have a look. When we depend on God in our loss and our pain and in our grief, and when we allow ourselves to rest and receive the revelation of his matchless grace and favor in our difficult times, then he produces within us a grace to be happy. Does that make sense? Said simply, God promises us, he promises me, he promises you that as we give him our problem, our tears, our pain, our sadness, like whatever it is that is causing us to mourn, as we give that to him, he promises us that he will give us the grace that we need to find the happiness in amongst the pain. But not only that, he forgives us. Also, he refreshes us. He comforts us. Most of us relate mourning to the death of somebody or the loss of something. But we could also mourn for things like our sins, for the sins of others. Mourning really is a gift. Sometimes we can sit in the pain and wallow in it. We can sit in condemnation and shame. But mourning is like a beautiful gesture. It's a beautiful exchange with God. It allows us to make the decision intentionally to grieve it, to let it go instead of holding onto it and being afflicted by the pain that it has caused or will cause. You know, tears are such a blessing. Our inability to mourn withholds us from the blessing of tears. The word of God says that tears actually lead us to comfort. In another scripture, it says that He will give us beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that as we sow in tears, we will reap in joy, and that He will wipe the tears from our eyes. These aren't bad things. Tears are to be encouraged. Mourning is to be encouraged. Let me be 100% authentic to you right now. When I found the beauty of mourning like my whole life changed i was able to identify these areas these things when i was able to start grieving and processing and inspecting my heart and even my past and the situations that i was in my whole life turned around my whole life was transformed the things that held me bondage the things that oppressed me no longer oppressed me and yeah it was a journey to get out of these things but the thing is Once I laid myself basically naked before him in this full authentic vulnerability and gave him my whole heart, then he was able to change it and give me his and give me his truth. I stopped going to people and things. I stopped withholding and avoiding. It was like literally that blockage that was in my heart, that thing that I used to swallow back down, like it was gone, it was removed. I was able to be me, the vulnerable, authentic, genuine me that I was created to be. The lover of Jesus that I am, no no longer stagnant, murky, hidden pond, but a gushing, flowing river. So let me encourage you, if you can relate to this if you find that you have an inability to mourn if you feel that you have blockages within you a really good place to start is to go to the psalms put on some soaking worship even read it in the passion translation you don't have to read it in that but it helps you to connect and pour out your heart to god let him minister to your heart to you he knows exactly what you need let's pray father god i pray that you give us a heart that genuinely and authentically cries out to you i am undone may i fully depend on you and your grace and your strength in my times of need in my times of distress my times of suffering god for you to comfort me 
to bring me into happiness. Help me to see, Father God, how much of a blessing it is to mourn, to cry, to pour out my heart to you for my sake and for the sake of others. Only you can comfort me. Teach me how to mourn with you, God of comfort. Teach me how to receive your grace for happiness, for refreshing, for forgiveness, restoration. Lord, I repent for not coming to you in my times of sorrow. Lord, I repent for running and hiding and avoiding and withholding from the blessing that you have, from the comfort that you have that you promise me. I repent for not trusting you and putting my fears above who you wanted to be for me in that situation, or who you wanted to be for me in this beautiful exchange. Today, Lord, I come before you and I give you my ashes, give you my mourning, give you my spirit of heaviness. I give you my tears and I receive your beauty, receive your joy. I receive a spirit of praise. I receive your happiness. I receive your comfort. You know, we may lose people, possessions. We may feel pain from our past, from sin, for the sin of others. There are so many situations that happen in life. There are so many hardships. But God is our merciful Father. And by His Spirit, we find hope and we find comfort in Jesus. So I pray this blesses you today. And I pray that you grow into deeper relationship with God, our comforter. In Jesus' name, amen.